Hello, and welcome to my new video series all about Bridgetown, a Ruby web framework. Rather than bore you with looking at a terminal and typing in commands and fiddling around with code examples, uh, you, know, you can get all that out of a blog post. So rather than get into that, I thought I would just record myself talking about the Bridgetown website, what it says Bridgetown is, what it says Bridgetown is good for, and just walk you through that here in this video. So. Let's get started. So this is the beta version of the Bridgetown website. Uh, 0.15 will be released any day now. So by the time you're watching this video, uh, it will be 0.15 at www.bridgetownrb.com. Uh, but anyway, I'm just uh, walking through the materials here. Uh, so first of all, Bridgetown, what is it? Well, it says here that Bridgetown is a Webpack aware Ruby-powered static site generator for the modern Jamstack era. <laughs> That's a little bit of a mouthful, so let's break it down. First of all, Webpack aware. What does that mean? Well, Webpack, very simply, is a JavaScript-based tool that bundles together packages. So you install packages to give your site uh, CSS frameworks like Bulma or Bootstrap or Tailwind. Uh, you can install JavaScript packages like Stimulus or Alpine, or even large frameworks like React or Vue. Uh, you can install all kinds of packages from the NPM ecosystem. Uh, NPM is, is the primary way that uh, front-end packages get uh, distributed, and you can install those. And you install those, and then Webpack takes together all of the packages that you've uh, defined in your, in your own code files. You know, you import from here, you import from there, and then Webpack takes that all and bundles it together into, most of the time, a single JavaScript file and a single CSS file that your website uses. Not every static site generator out there uh, has uh, built-in integration with Webpack, so I think it's a cool feature about Bridgetown. Next says Ruby powered. So Ruby powered, yes, Bridgetown is a Ruby based tool. That means that you have to install the programming language Ruby on your computer. You don't really need to know much about Ruby. You don't have to be an expert Ruby programmer. Uh, it's entirely possible to build a site with Bridgetown and never actually write any Ruby code. It just means that Bridgetown itself is written in Ruby. And if you want to write any plugins or do any really cool customizations at the code level, uh, you'll, you'll need to use Ruby, which I think is cool because Ruby is an awesome language. It's delightful, it's fun, it's, it's very readable. You get to write very, very elegant code. And uh, you know, I've been a Rubyist for years, so I'm biased, of course. But I think Ruby is a great language, uh, completely relevant in this year, 2020. It's not Ruby's not going anywhere. It's not dying. <laughs> Rumors of its death have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, so yeah, I think Ruby is is still one of the best languages out there for doing anything on the web, and that's uh, what Bridgetown is written in. All right, next, static site generator. So static site generator, uh, this term here, essentially all it means is that your site is served as a snapshot when people go to your site. So when somebody you know, visits a web page on your site, uh, they're not getting something that's been generated at that point. It's not dynamically generated and sent to their browser at that moment. What they're seeing instead is a snapshot. It's something that has been already built previously and has just been saved somewhere. So they're, they're literally just loading up HTML files through a CDN, a content delivery network, uh, or just from a plain old web server, uh, and that's what they're getting. So that's, that's the static part of it. So when you're working on a site, uh, you know, you'll, 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 you'll work on your content, you'll, you'll build the layout, you'll do all the things to, to, you know, put your website together, and then there's an actual build process to take all of that content and all that design and turn it into the final website that people see. And that build process can happen multiple times a day. It can happen anytime you commit any changes to a Git repository or anytime uh, an API needs to provide new data to the site. 
All right, so that's what a static site generator does. And then what's this bit here, modern Jamstack era? Well, uh, basically the, the static site generator philosophy was actually pretty popular in the early days of the web, uh, you know, before WordPress, and before a lot of these other CMSs that a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, and it, you know, it, so it was it was a thing that a lot of people were familiar with, and then it kind of died out to some extent. Uh, but it's come back in a big way, and the term Jamstack uh, sort of uh, puts a new spin on things. And uh, it was originally an acronym J A M, which stood for JavaScript APIs and Markup. Um, but uh, that that sort of isn't as relevant anymore. Uh, it's just sort of a term. So basically, Jamstack just simply means the philosophy of of building a site using a static site generator, and then you know once the page loads, if you want to do all kinds of cool dynamic things like animations or pulling in new content from APIs or updating things on the fly, you can do all that through you know client side technologies through JavaScript. Uh, and, and augment your site with those. Uh, so it's it's really this interesting hybrid approach between you know static snapshots of a site and adding on uh, all the interactive bits once the page first loads. So Bridgetown is open source, of course, and it's fast, scalable, modular, and thoroughly forward-looking. Uh, and all that means is that uh, Ruby in the past got a, a bit of a bit of a bum rap about uh, it being really slow, uh, and uh, I just want to put it out there that I've done a lot of benchmark testing. Uh, I'm going to be publishing uh, more and more uh, benchmarks over the next few months, uh, but it, Ruby just isn't that slow anymore. Uh, at least not compared to JavaScript. Uh, in fact, a very popular JavaScript static site generator called Eleventy. I've been doing numerous tests between Bridgetown and Eleventy just because the, the philosophy of how they work is fairly similar. Uh, and they're pretty much neck to neck. So if you think Eleventy is fast, then Bridgetown is fast. <laughs> uh, you know, perhaps not as fast as using something like Hugo, which is written in the Go language. Uh, that is a very, very fast uh, static site generator, but uh, but Bridgetown for for most sites, you know, hundreds of pages, even a few thousand pages, it's going to build in a few seconds. And if it doesn't, uh, you know, it, there might be something going on that uh, just needs to be optimized in uh, in the template or something. Uh, and that's you know, I, I I'm perfectly happy to help uh, troubleshoot that. All right, so let's get on to these main bullet points: uh, crafting clever content. So in Bridgetown, your content starts out as basically text files. So you can write content in Markdown, which is a popular uh, way to, to define text content these days. Uh, you can also write plain HTML. Um, and if you really want to write in some other sort of Markdown-like format, uh, you can uh, write a little converter that will just uh, take whatever that is and convert it to HTML, and that could just be a plugin. Uh, but most people use Markdown. Uh, and then you can augment that with liquid tags. So the liquid template engine that comes with Bridgetown uh, lets you, you know, add tags and add filters uh, just inline in your content to, to do all kinds of cool processing. Uh, if you've worked with something like short codes in WordPress, uh, it's kind of a similar concept. And you can use liquid tags that are already available, or you can write your own tags, which is cool. Just little little tag plugins to do all kinds of neat things. Um, if you prefer to use a headless CMS or some other kind of third-party API, in other words, your content lives in some other system and it's not directly inside of a Bridgetown repository, uh, you can do that too. You can write a little plugin. It's usually just a few lines of code uh, to pull data out of an API and then uh, use that to generate pages. So very flexible with the content. Uh, next up, the design. So when you're designing your site, uh, you can use liquid templates, of course. But we also have this concept called components. Um, and if you've ever heard of components in the context of a client-side framework like React, it's pretty similar here. It's just sort of from a server-side angle. So uh, you'll write little bits of HTML uh, within liquid components. And then you can compose those components together. You know, so you could have a component like a button or a card 
or a box with some content in it, uh, or, or a nav bar could be a component. Uh, you could even have you know, components inside the nav bar for different elements, like a logo component or a search box component. Uh, so you can use all these little components and compose them together. The nice thing about the components is you can also uh, preview them and test them in isolation uh, the, you know, the way they get built. So it's not just, you know, it's not just a, a bunch of template bits that all require each other, and if you take them out of that context, they don't work. So that's the nice thing about components. And you can use components provided by themes and plugins or write your own. Um, speaking of plugins, you can of course develop your own plugins using the delightful Ruby programming language. Um, but there's a growing ecosystem now of, of plugins that you can install that other people have developed. Uh, these are called Ruby Gems. Uh, Ruby Gems are just Ruby packages that you can install to uh, supercharge your site build. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually add Ruby code directly to your templates inside the Bridgetown repository. Uh, it's called Ruby Front Matter. Uh, and it's kind of a, a cool little uh, quick, quick hack kind of thing you can do. Uh, one thing we've done, for instance, is uh, the plugins page here. Uh, the code to pull all the plugins for uh, Bridgetown off of GitHub and uh, present all this information here. Uh, all that code was done in just a little bit of Ruby code that lives in the front matter of this page itself. Uh, so it's not even in a plugin. It's just, it's just a little snippet of code we have in the same text file as, as this page content. Pretty fun. Um, all right, moving along here. Add a monitored front end. We talked about this. Bridgetown comes with support for Webpack out of the box. You can add JavaScript frameworks, you can add CSS frameworks, you can add CSS and JavaScript utilities of all sorts. Basically anything that you would install with Yarn using the NPM ecosystem, uh, you can do so and then it uh, just works because Webpack is available to you. Uh, it's really nice and I think a lot, a lot of reasons that people reach for uh, one of the static site generators like Next.js or Gatsby or Gridsome or one of, one of the ones that's kind of built around a client-side framework. Uh, I think a lot of people could get a lot of mileage just using something like Bridgetown where you start with the markup, you start with the server-side kind of approach to uh, generating HTML and providing the CSS and then just kind of sprinkle some JavaScript on top only for the interactive bits that you need. Uh, so again, as an example, on this site here, you know, this entire nav bar was generated statically. So it was done as part of the build process, but there's also a search bar here. So this part is, of course, dynamic. So if I type in search, like Jamstack, uh, I get a list of results. What's a Jamstack, project goals, it's a blog post. And the nice thing here is uh, the search index is actually just a JSON file, also generated statically. And the only really dynamic bit here is the search bar loads in that JSON search index, and it uses lunar.js, which is a cool little JavaScript library that you know just makes that index searchable. So you know it's it's uh, you know you can do kind of fuzzy searches like uh, front end tools. Uh, and you know it can match tools or it can match front end and kind of you know hopefully give you the most relevant results up front. So modern front ends and then finally deploy anywhere. One of the cool things about static sites is there's so many different options for deployment. You know, you can build the site on your local computer and just copy <laughs> FTP if you want, uh, you know, a folder of, of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that's all been pre-built. You can just copy that to a web server somewhere and, and it's good to go. But most people use something more automated. So Netlify is an example. There are other services such as Versal. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a growing ecosystem of hosting services out there like this. But basically what happens is uh, you just have a repository up on GitHub or Bitbucket or one of those kind of services. Uh, and every time you push a commit to one of, uh, one of those repository uh, platforms like GitHub, 
uh, Netlify or Versal or one of these services uh, will automatically get notified and it will automatically build and deploy your site. So again, I could be here at my computer, I could update some uh, markdown file, you know, add a new blog post to my site, uh, and just you know, type a command to commit that to the repository. And then mere minutes later, sometimes just like a minute later, the site's updated because uh, it's been automatically built and deployed uh, because of that git commit. So it's a really nice workflow, uh, and you can build services uh, your, on your on your own, or find others out there where uh, where you know if you're working with a client, and you don't want them to be editing text files. You want them to use more of a of a CMS kind of interface. Uh, you can provide that to them. They can you know they can just use a nice looking web form to type out their content, uh, and when they hit save under the hood, you could uh, commit to the Git repository and have that on Mac build process get triggered. So it's pretty flexible. It's pretty nice. Uh, and let's see. I think that's about it. Uh, so to recap, uh, Bridgetown. It's a Webpack aware, Ruby powered static site generator for the modern Java stack era. This website, of course, was built with Bridgetown itself, so you can see the kind of things it can do. Uh, you know, we have a full suite of documentation here. Uh, you can easily click around and read all the documentation. You, know, you can look at the plugins that are available for Bridgetown. You can read blog posts. Uh, all kinds of different things here that are available. This entire site was built with Bridgetown, uh, and it's open source. So in fact, you can go to github.com and go to Bridgetown RB slash Bridgetown. And the Bridgetown-website folder is where the website lives. So you can look at how this website was constructed. Uh, there's just a few configuration files here in the top folder. Uh, there's a plugins folder with a few Ruby files, just a few. There's a front end folder that has fonts, JavaScript, and styles. And these are just a few basic JavaScript files and uh, some, some SAS. CSS files, um, but most of the stuff is all here in the source folder. Uh, we have components, uh, and some data files that are in the YAML format, uh, some layout templates, uh, blog posts and posts, uh, a few other pages. Most of the content is in the documentation collection under docs. Um, and you know, let's, let's see, what's the getting started page? Uh, this is the raw file. This is it. This is the front matter at the top. Just a few little bits of metadata like the title and the section it's in, category. Uh, and then the rest of the content's just marked down. And that's all it is. And so you go from that to, uh, let's go back here. Uh, you go from that to that. And that's what Bridgetown does. All right, thanks for watching this first video. This is the start of a series. So this video is just an overview of what Bridgetown is and what it can do. But in future videos, I'll go into all of these individual features. I'll do a whole video just about Webpack integration. I'll do a whole video on liquid components, a whole video on automations, which is a cool new feature coming in 0.15. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing a whole bunch of videos about these different features. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. And until the next video, Bye-bye.